So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Bradford City versus MK Dons. And then the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my Game Week 32 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down below. In the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. And what would your starting 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from Saturday's 1 0 win away at Wrexham? Firstly, thank you all very much for the support on the vlog from that. Over 4,000 views, over 200 likes. That is massively, massively appreciated. And obviously, if you haven't already gone and checked it out, what on earth are you doing? Make sure to go check that video out. It was an absolutely amazing vlog. And yeah, please feel free to go and check that one out if you haven't already. But drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well and let's get into it. Channel memberships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p. Tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from 8.99 a month down to just 4.99 a month. Your support as always is massively appreciated and the more members that we have the better the content will be. Enjoy the rest of the video. Starting out then with the current at Skybet League 2 table. My team Bradford City, we couldn't sit 14th in the table. After 31 matches we've got 10 wins at 10 draws and 11 defeats, scoring 36 goals and conceding at 39, which leaves us on a minus 3 goal difference and 40 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a win, a draw, a loss, a draw and a draw. Then last couple of matches then been a 1-0 win away at Wrexham, a 0-0 draw at home to AFC Wimbledon, a 1-0 win at home to Doncaster Rovers in the Football League Trophy quarter-final, a 2-0 defeat away at Swindon Town, a 1-1 draw at home to Salford City and a 1-1 draw away at Colchester United. If we compare that then, it's Two MK Dons, they currently sit up in the playoffs in sixth. After 30 matches, they've got 15 wins, six draws, and nine defeats, scoring 49 goals and conceding 38, which leaves them on a positive 11 goal difference and 51 points. Their last couple of matches being a win, a loss, a win, a win, and a loss. So, pretty positive form, you would say, there on the whole. If you're going to be like that for the remainder of the season, you probably will see them end up finishing in the playoffs. Them last couple of matches, them being a 2 1 win at home to Accrington Stanley. I'm pretty sure they won that in the last minute. They also had a 1-0 defeat away at Barrow, a 2-1 win at home to Gillingham FC, a 3-1 win at home to AFC Wimbledon, a 2-1 defeat at home to Morecambe and a 2-1 win away at Tramia Rovers. So, like I say, pretty consistent so far this season. Obviously, Graham Alexander was managing MK Dons at the start of the campaign. Since then, I think Mike Williamson has come in and he's done a much better job than what Alexander had done by the time that he obviously got the sack there. In the reverse fixture, we lost his game 4-1 with Jamie Walker and Richie Smallwood both suspended. Kevin McDonald was not only managing the team, he also had to play in that one as well. So we're looking to get some revenge and now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander. Now obviously Saturday's win was an absolutely excellent one and I feel like we should stick with the 3-4-3 formation once more. In goal, I've gone with Sam Walker. He finally proved why we brought him in. I think I saw a stat somewhere sorry, that he made 10 or 11 saves in a Bradford City shirt and around 5 of them were in the game at the weekend against Wrexham. He hasn't really had much to do in the games prior to that one, but he had a few saves to make in that one against Wrexham. One or two really, really impressive, most notably for me when Stephen Fletcher had a header at the back post. It looked like it was going in that far corner and Walker manages to tip it away. I thought that was a really good save. There was a couple other ones where you probably expect him to make, you know, shots from distance and all that sort of stuff, but the way he commanded that area with the long throws, the corners that were coming into the box was really, really impressive. Definitely his best performance in a Bradford City shirt and for me personally it absolutely has to remain in this side he was excellent at the weekend into my back three then as the right centre back I've gone with Jonathan Tomkinson I thought again he dealt with Wrexham's threat very well at the weekend you know, at times, a lot of the more physical strikers like to play on Tomkinson. He is, as he is obviously the weakest out of the three, but he's, you know, he deals with a lot of these strikers very well, in my opinion. And obviously, he's got that pace in that back three that we definitely need. You know, MK Dons have got some good, tricky attackers, so Tomkinson is going to be very key for us in this one. In the middle, I've gone with Matty Platt. I wouldn't really say you notice Platt too much at the weekend, but when your centre half is someone who you don't really notice, it usually means I've had quite a positive game. I don't think he lost many of his duels. 
he put in some nice tackles at times as well and for me personally out of him Taylor or Stubbs I would rather have Platt in the middle at this moment in time so he stays in this side and at left centre back I've gone with Kieran Kelly I thought first half him and Richards kind of got their press a little bit wrong at times obviously Richards did end up coming off I don't think he will be available for selection in this one but Kelly at times didn't really know whether to stay in line with these other centre backs or go out and help Richards in the wide areas but apart from that I thought on the whole a pretty solid game from Kieran Kelly and again should definitely stay in this side at right wing back I've gone with Brad Halliday absolutely excellent against Wrexham you know you look at some of the firepower in that side especially the likes of James McLean and Mendy playing against Halliday I thought he dealt with McLean very very well there are a number of really good tackles he put in on him and apart from set plays McLean really struggled to get balls into the box and Halliday for me had a really really positive game once more great to see him back to his best and like I say absolutely has to remain in this side because he has been excellent for us not only this season but again at the weekend against Wrexham into my two central midfielders then at first I've gone with Richie Smallwood he should stay in this side for me obviously the captain of the football club and I thought he really led by example at the weekend in the games where Bradford City are potentially the underdogs or the opposition are going to have a lot of the ball over playing against opposition from levels above Smallwood really stands out and I thought he did that at the weekend first half not as noticeable but especially in that second half the number of tackles and blocks he was putting in on Wrexham and obviously Andy Cook missed that penalty and then Smallwood had that Oh, would you call it a moment of madness? We spoke about in yesterday's six things we learnt where he won four or five 50 50s in a space of about 10 15 seconds. Yes, on another day, some of them might have been red cards, but that is what you want to see from your captain showing that passion and commitment, running through brick walls, and that is why he should be in this side once more. And partnering him, I've gone with it, Kevin McDonald. Every time McDonald comes on off the bench, he affects the game, he certainly changes it in a positive way. I thought again he did that at the weekend when he came on for Richards and Gilead went over to wing back. Obviously, McDonald has a big part to play in our goal in the end. Yes, it's a brilliant piece of individual play from Andy Cook, but McDonald works really hard to just get a toe on the ball off of Elliot Lee to play that ball through into Andy Cook. I don't know if that will actually count as a McDonald assist as the keeper did originally save Cook's first attempt, but I'd like to hope it does as McDonald was a massive factor in us scoring that goal, so he definitely stays in this side for me. And that left wing back, we've touched on it a few times in the video so far. Alex Gilead for me. Lewis Richards will probably be unavailable. He had some sort of head injury where his eye was starting to close and I don't think in two three days time that's going to have suddenly magically healed again the swelling might have gone down a little bit but I'd rather make sure that he's raring to go fit and ready for the weekend so Gilead stays in at left wing back for me I thought he did a pretty solid job there at the weekend and he's definitely much better than Liam Rydalg for me I would probably have Rydalg on the bench maybe but he just can't be starting in a back three in my opinion and should definitely be Alex Gilead at wing back into my front three then as the right winger I've gone with at Bobby Poynton. Now, Callum Kavanagh or Harry Chapman for me didn't really do enough to warrant staying in the side, especially Harry Chapman. I was really disappointed with not just his quality on the ball, but his work rate as well. At least Kavanagh was putting in the hard yards at times, but Chapman didn't really seem interested at the weekend. So I like to see Bobby Poynton get another opportunity. Alexander, for some reason, doesn't really like picking him or bringing him on off the bench. He sees players like Clark Adore as better options there. Even Alex Gilead as a better option as a winger was baffling to me, really. But Poynton, I think, should come in for this match and we'll see what he can come up with again obviously in the reverse fixture I'm pretty sure he assisted Alex Gilead for that goal as a striker I've gone with Andy Cook we spoke about it again in yesterday's six things we learnt video the mentality from Andy Cook after missing such an important penalty to go again and I think Alexander spoke about it in his post-match interview not I want to score I need to score and having that mentality was very key for Andy Cook in scoring that goal the way he just shrugged off a few defenders battled his way through he made sure that ball went over the line and it was great to see him get I think his 14th goal of the season in all competitions 12 in the league obviously he could have a couple more as well he has missed three penalties so far this season I think he's scored two out of five scored at home to Walsall and also away to Forest Green and the other ones have all been saved by the goalkeeper it was a poor penalty but he's come up with a winner in the end and Andy Cook should definitely stay in this side for me and as the left winger I've gone with it Jake Young obviously was on the bench at the weekend I've been not trained all week after receiving a pretty poor challenge from that AFC Wimbledon play but I would look to bring him back into the side for this match obviously we know what he's done at Swindon hasn't really done too much so far and a Bradford City shirt has shown some bright glimpses 
in the few games that he has played so far, but I'd like to see him get a start next to Andy Cook and see what them two could come up with. Obviously, if you need to change formation, you could drop points and back into the midfield and go with a front two of Cook and Young, but I certainly think a front three of Point and Cook and Young would be very terrifying at this level. On the bench now for me, that'd leave Colin Doyle at Sam Stubbs, at Liam Rydow, at Clark Adore, who I don't think was too bad when he came on off the bench against Wrexham. You know, that... The only thing I remember from Clark Adore, and I've actually come away from a game remembering something that Clark Adore has done in a match. He picked up the ball, he looked to take it past O'Connell, and he went past him pretty easily, but for some reason, he just doesn't want to seem to take players on. But he's proven that he actually can do so. So if Adore keeps playing like that, he might find himself getting a start, in my opinion. Also on the bench then will be Harry Chapman, Callum Kavanagh, and Tyler Smith. The players currently unavailable are Daniel Yagoke, Lewis Richards, that's a presumption, Alex Patterson, Jamie Walker, who, I mean, we still don't have a timescale on Jamie Walker obviously has either broken or fractured his leg from that tackle against Doncaster so I think we'll be lucky to see him anytime soon if I'm being honest with you and I'm pretty sure Tyreek Wright will also be unavailable he might be available but I feel like Alexander and the physios will be wanting him to be want him to be fit and rare uh, fit ready and raring to go for the weekend against Sutton so the players who miss out through selection will be Ash Taylor Adam Wilson and Matt Derbyshire now then we're going to get into my game week 32 at League 2 score predictions starting out then with Accrington Stanley versus AFC Wimbledon I'm going to back the home side at 4 a 1 nil win Barrow AFC versus Forest Green Rovers I think finishes in a 2 nil home win Bradford City versus MK Dons, I think finishes in a 1 1 draw. Colchester United versus Grimsby Town, I think finishes in a 2 2 draw. Crotley Town versus Walsall FC, I think finishes in a 2 0 home win. Gilling FC versus Swindon Town, obviously the Jills recently picking up a brilliant win away at Notts County. I'm going 3 1 to the home side in that one. Mansfield Town versus Harrogate Town, obviously Mansfield battering Forest Green the other day, but I think this one will finish in a 1 1 draw. Harrogate have been on some really good form recently as well. Newport County versus Notts County, the battle of two counties and back in the home side though for a 2-1 win. Salford City versus Doncaster Rovers I think finishes in a 0-0 draw. Stockport County versus Crew Alexandra and back in the home side for a 1-0 win. Sutton United versus Wrexham AFC I think finishes 2-0 to the visitors. Tramia Rovers versus Morecambe FC is the final game and I'm going 3-1 to the away side in that one but I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try to 80 likes as I said at the start of today's video that would be massive appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below your score prediction for this match what would your starting 11 be as well would you make any changes from saturday's 1-0 win away at rex and thank you all very much for watching today's video and thank you all for the support over the last couple as well have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all tomorrow for the match day vlog Peace.